Not expecting anything special tonight, to be honest. But absolutely no time to prepare. And if slot one taught me anything, it's that this car and track combination is not a good one. It's far from it. The pace is just absolutely nowhere. You can see there, we're not even on the leaderboard. We're like a second off what the freaking top guys are doing. And that was after I put about 45 minutes worth of practice in the other day, so... Yeah. Gonna be a tough one, that's for sure. Anyway, hope for a little bit of good luck, maybe. Try not to die. And... Yeah, who knows. Something good might come our way. It's just the fact that this car lacks horsepower so much. It just makes it so damn hard. Like I can just about match like I can just about match like all the top guys through like the high speed corners and shit. It's probably a little bit better through this type of stuff. But on the straights, man. Unless you're literally right under the rear wing of the next car, you just can't do anything. And it's so bloody aggravating when you just, you feel like you're on the limit, even then, like, that first sector felt good, but as you can see, we're nearly three tenths down, so, mmm, just perfect, absolutely perfect. I don't even know if 2 is like a good brake boss to be running, but I don't know, seems to be the most comfortable thing over one lap, so we'll stick with it. What do we got tonight? McCosey, Keaton, Matt. Yeah, right, so we got a decent field then. A couple of people that were here for slot 1 have not returned. Dylan Linger and ERT Noodles. As far as I heard, they probably come home with a 1-2 in that past race, or actually no, looking at Makosi with 320. I'll go out on the limb and say they've probably got second and third then, that being the case. Definitely gonna have to hope for a bit of bloody luck tonight. So what's the points look like? 328, so Makosi could still even improve on his own bloody best. That's a worrying thought, isn't it? <laughs> Alright, well, we'll just go out and see what we can do. We'll try and make the LI guys proud. <laughs> Probably something that's not going to happen, but we'll see. interesting to see now that Lingren's gone what qualifying is going to look like because I think after Dylan there was like a 35-7 I think which was pole or something from Makosi so yeah be interesting to see what goes on in saying that um, Keaton is in here the second of the McLaren so they could definitely make things a little bit Interesting is what do we got going on here? New York traffic jam by the looks of it. Yep, just casually. 
Oh my god, man, seriously. It's just so sketchy through there every damn time. Alright, let's try something different. Yeet, around we go. Hey, you gotta have a little bit of fun, come on. <laughs> Alright. I think really looking at the field. I really don't think I can honestly aim for anything probably more than a top 10. Um, I'll actually be amazed if I end up with a top 5 to be honest. Um, this thing is really not uh, great over quality trim around here over one lap pace and if anything the race pace actually turned out to be worse as uh, I did attempt slot one about an hour ago or whenever that was only made it to lap nine before I died not in the chicane of death actually it was actually just up here um, turn three or whatever it is this real awkward right hander up here I went to cut this inside curb up here but I didn't quite do it by enough and yeah, ended up sending me to the moon and back, so, yeah, bit of an F there for slot one, but, anyway, we'll see what happens if, uh, if we can actually get through this race cleanly, definitely going to need to find a toe though, I can't do a lap on my own around here, we'll be lucky to get into a 10, I feel like I've put in a perfect lap, in, uh, in slot 1 and that was only enough to get me 10th by like a tenth of a second so yeah we're gonna have to hopefully try and find someone who will try and work with us or do something Probably started that lap a bit far back actually, if anything. I don't even know if we're actually in frickin' slipstream range. No, I actually don't think we are. Well, that was clever. got through but that was scruffy I got put off by like two cars that fucking died right in front of us it's always handy to have that happen <sighs> yeah I knew that wasn't gonna last Look at that, now we're just getting absolutely shafted back down the order. I think I might even see if I can just sit in the toe of this Merc to be honest. I saw a few comments pop up in the live chat too guys, so 
I do know that uh, they're there. I'll have a look um, probably after Paulie's over. It's uh, a yeah, tad bit hard to try and reach over and see it right now. Eight tenths down. Jesus. And you can only wait till Makozi pops up because he hasn't even set a time yet. Probably should actually get the hammer down here and make sure we're actually in the slipstream range of this bloody Merc again. Jesus Christ, that's, that's too close. Alright, we're definitely a bit closer than what we were to, uh, to whoever we were following last time. Hopefully this can help us out a little bit. Scruffy corner that. Thirty five three, fucking hell. That was a bit of a better run again, as long as this Merc doesn't try and go defensive, because we're not going to try and go for the move. Because that will just slow both of us down. Alright, hopefully a low 36 at least. Now 35.8, I'll take that. That's alright. Break that once you're running. I'm using two clicks to the rear, mate. Um, not too sure if that's actually really good or not. Um, it is sliding about quite a bit, but yeah, I really don't know if there's any other, well, real good ideas. So just uh, learning to roll with it at the moment. You know, the fact that we we're almost basically half a second off, even with the fact that we had Slipstream for almost an entire lap, is just absolutely unreal.
Yeah, that wasn't quite right. I don't think we'll be improving, to be honest. <laughs> We're still up, apparently. It's by stuff all, but we are. Another good run through the chicane. Definitely a better run through the final corner than we got last time, but I think the toe up to the line is probably going to pay you dividends. Yep. So I only lose out by half a tenth though, that's not bad. I'm actually pleased with that. So, effectively, Keaton in the McLaren, he's got three tenths over the field, so effectively we're only a tenth and a half off. That's not bad, considering we're basically going up against a Lamborghini, a Mercedes and a Chevrolet in a car that has absolutely no horsepower. That's pretty good, I'll take that. Only thing that will worry me now is, uh, yeah, tie wear and fuel during the race. That's the only thing that's going to worry me. Tires more than anything, to be honest. I'm honestly thinking like a double soft stint almost might work just to be able to try and run flat out for 80-90% of the race because I'm not going to get anywhere near or in amongst these guys running a conventional strategy let's try, okay 328 Yeah, I think we're just going to start on sauce and we've just got to... Well, we just got to bloody go for it. We'll see how it works out, but yeah. Just got to minimise the mistakes and hope for something good. Keaton, though, man. Three and a half tenths clear. That's pretty impressive, but the McLaren is pretty strong around here, so... Yeah, probably got a bit of a, quote, OP car underneath him. Anyway, starting P5, that's a hell of a lot better than what I imagined, so, I don't know, we'll see if we can make the LR guys proud. Let's get into it. Keaton McDonald is the world's fastest gamer with around the McLaren. We'll do a throwback to Mr. James Baldwin if I do remember correctly. Daniel Holland, P2. Cody Lukowski, P3. Usual suspects, no big shock there. Mahindajit, P4 in a Chevrolet. That is quite surprising. Somehow we line up in the top five for the little boxer. Ted Reed for Aston Martin, lines up P6. The Aston seem pretty strong here in the first race actually with Noodles, so that'll be interesting to actually see where your hands up. 
Matt Simmons in the very nice Castro NSX there. Captain Risky in the Alfa Romeo. Old Martini livery. Another Aston, the second. So two in the top ten. They'd have to be pretty, pretty happy with that. The second Mercedes just outside in P11. Ferrari P12 in the form of Viper. He's, um, he's actually the one responsible for, uh, for making this beautiful livery which I've actually got on my car. So uh, if you're watching, mate, thank you very much for uh, creating that, especially when I asked for it on such short notice as well. So uh, thank you very much. Alright, just about time to get into it I reckon. Fuel saving and tyre saving is pretty damn critical in this race I must admit, so... Be interesting to see what happens. I think I'm just going to leave it on too. I played around with the brakes a little bit in the first slot race. Probably put me off a little bit, so... I'm just not going to touch them. Here we go. Just had to cover the Aston off there. I didn't really like the way he was looking. Everybody up here in fuel saving mode, you can already tell. Top two might be trying to make a break for it ever so slightly. Back off a bit here from these two, so I could see me turn in point. Always awkward when you're so close to the car ahead of you through there, you can't see your turning points. Makes your job a lot harder. Did he just flash his lights in at me? I think he did, didn't he? Just courtesy from him there, cheers for that. Must be on a harder tyre, Bukowski's never that slow in general. Very rarely anyway. There goes Caden. Yes, he's dead.
need to be more aggressive in there. I'm just going to get eaten back alive now by these guys. Because they won't bump draft. Alright. Alright, well if he goes back through and gets a wriggle on then that's fine. I'm just really trying to save fuel as much as I can and just save these tyres as hard as I possibly can trying to put minimum load through them every chance I get Well, that definitely ain't the fastest way through there, but the guy behind did an even worse job, so... Six people here now, good evening to you all. Come on GTA, you gotta pick up the pace.
Whoa! Yep, cool. Just casually picks up a two second penalty. Doesn't really mean shit because he's already ruined my race, but. Oh well. That was crucial, we actually got that done there. Could actually be on for maybe a P5. Probably be ahead of this Peugeot right now if it wasn't for that shit a couple of laps ago. Oof, got my line all fucked up through there. I wonder if Dan's put softs on again. I think he must have.
So there those two go. Bet evenly matched on fuel with Keaton. Got no idea what Holland's state is. Don't really care at the moment. How can we basically only be halfway? Jesus. I would say Keaton might have made a mistake, he just dropped down. That's not going to help our cause, come on. Can't be doing that shit. I'm almost half tempted to come in at like lap 15, do a lap on hards, and then actually come in and throw softs on. Jesus, Holland's got like almost 10 liters less. Plus obviously he owes an extra stop, so what's he going on to and where is he? 
There he is. I don't believe this is the way it actually stands, but somehow we find ourselves in the lead. I'd expect Holland Davis pretty quickly here to be honest. He's on like new medium rubber compared to us. We're like on eight and nine laps old, so I'd expect this to be pretty quick one sided move. Lambo doesn't seem very strong through the chicane of death, it must be said. We're about half a lap short, really. So we're going to have to put a little bit in. Hopefully it won't cost us. see how close Holland is now. We'll have us down at the bottom of the hill here. I'd be a fool to even fight that one. We'll just let him go. No point. We're in completely different races. He's on brand new rubber, I'm on stuff that God knows how old.
few stupid mistakes starting to creep in now that these tyres are really wearing. I think I might honestly just pit this late for hards. If they feel too crap, then I'll just come straight back in and put sauce on. We've effectively done like 10 laps on these and they feel absolutely garbage. So this is effective P4. Probably won't be for long way, let's be honest. Keeping probably on warm mediums or softs. Or on stone cold hards. I think we might even just try carry on to the end to be honest. If we stop for another set of stops we're not really going to accomplish anything. And the car honestly doesn't feel that bad so... Eh, I think we just continue. Like I said I'm just trying to run the fastest race time that I possibly can. I don't think any of those guys up here have to stop again. Actually, I'm, uh, I'm not actually 100% sure, I don't actually know off the top of my head, I can't remember. through there don't feel too handy done us a world of favours and that should do us some more Keaton McDonald easy mistake to make don't get me wrong probably gonna yeah I should have thought of that Peugeot will just come right back by us now unless we can somehow stay at the quarter panel and hopefully at least he doesn't try and defend this too hard as he should know we're faster we're on different strategies after all. And fair play to him, he's putting up a solid fight.
Eep! Jesus, thought we were nearly gonna rear end him. I do kind of want to get a move on here because Keaton isn't exactly like seven seconds back. And he'll, well, he is gaining on us pretty fucking quickly, so we need to get by here. To try and salvage a potential P4. We'll try a nice little block pass there, hold him out. Nicely done. Alright. Oh, and the Peugeot! <laughs> the Peugeot has now binned it as well. Oh dear. I'm just trying to run everything back through my head. I don't think... I know Metal Gear has to stop again. I'm positive Makosi doesn't. I'm not sure about GTR. That was a bit scrumpy through there. Survived 21 times, two to go. I've kind of got my fingers crossed that GTR actually does owe that hard tyre, or at least one of the compounds, but i got a strange feeling I don't think he does. Two laps to go, 2.4, yeah, that's fine, no bother. I know Holland has surely got to stop here. There he goes. Surely he'll come out in second, one would think. And GTR is in as well. Alright, hang on. Can we... Can we steal a podium right at the death? Viper up in the P4. That's not bad.
nice and easy. Well, we're going to finish 16 seconds off the lead, which is no real big surprise. But somehow, we've dragged the little box up, up onto the podium. Man. Hey Noodles, cheers buddy. Yeah, that was uh, that was a cool race. I don't think we really could have done any more. We couldn't have challenged those top two. They're just on another level right now. But best of the rest, effectively. Um, first stint again. I definitely think I don't want to say saved us, but definitely helped us a little bit. Probably should have actually stayed behind GTR a little bit more and tried to save some more. That way, I might have been able to push a bit harder in that middle stint. Don't think it would have made too much of a difference though, so... Yeah, I don't know. Still, P3, and another 300 pointer, first one for the season. Alright, Mint. Yeah, sure is, bloody good result for the WRX actually. Um, Typically, not been the uh, the best um, track for this car, but yeah, definitely pulled out a solid one there. So 301, that might actually put us somewhere along the lines of fourth or something in the uh, yeah, in the standings. Actually, no, maybe P5. I'm just trying to remember what the first slot looked like. Oh, I don't know, too bloody hard. <laughs> Anyway, save the replay because I want to go and actually look back at that later. So, there's your finishing order, guys. Makozi takes the win. No big surprise there. Dan Holland home in P2. We somehow come home for a brilliant P3. Then we have Viper, Keaton, GTR, FSR, Mint Matt. Um, oof, I'm honestly actually out of breath. Uh, Blue X Foes, probably pronounced that wrong. Forgive me, I'm absolutely buggered, so if I have, I apologise. But, uh, man, oh man, what a race. Not a bad idea, noodles. Cheers, mate. I'll, uh, probably go chilly chill out and do something myself. I'm not sure what though. <laughs> hey Ashton, you're uh, you're a tad bit late, you missed out on the cracker of a race man. You can go watch it back though. Uh, so 301. Well nothing's obviously been updated yet so we don't really know. Yeah, I know. You love your little Evo, don't you? Daily workout. What's this shitbox going to be? I don't really see anything special there. And that just goes to show it. The Dino 246. That's, uh, what, only out-of-date technology by 49 years? <laughs> oh, I say out-of-date, I mean, it's a bloody cracking car to, to own and to drive. Um, yeah, I might do in a few minutes. Ashton, I'll just go and have some dinner and uh, whatever else, and then I might shoot you a message. But that will do it for the stream tonight, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah. Just uh, a cracker of a race, somehow coming away with a podium in uh, in the opening round. So couldn't ask for much more, really. But yeah, thanks to everyone who came out. And until the next one, uh, actually, the next one will be tomorrow morning, um, eight o'clock. The uh, Transnation Esports F1 Nationals off to China this time. So uh, eight o'clock usual start. Stream will probably be up about ten to eight or seven fifty. 
So, uh, you know, hopefully you guys can uh, come and join me there. But, uh, yeah, until 8 a.m. the following morning, I shall see you all later.